Far, um, Faremi Williams Abbas Khan, Barack of 40 slaves cell. Let's go inside. You would not see this anywhere. Nobody's going to tell you the truth. So we'll start from there. Okay. Yeah. This is our curator, so he's going to take us round. And this is the man that helped us to locate here. Yeah. So you're welcome. Thank My you. My name is Moshud, once again. Nice to meet What's you, What's your Mishud. name, ma? Miriam. Miriam. Uh, with that name, Miriam, I can't tell you where you come from. What's your native name, ma? Me, I don't, I don't have one. You don't have one? I, I used to be a Muslim, so Miriam is a Muslim name. Miriam is a Muslim yeah, name. Yeah, my name is Miriam Oyakilome, actually. Okay. Yes. Uh, sir, what's your name, sir? My name is Michael. Michael, what's your native name, sir? Abayomi. Abayomi. With that name, Abayomi, I immediately know that Abayomi is from the Yoruba. But with your name, Miriam, I can't tell you where you come it's from. It's an Arabic name. With my name, Moshud, I can't tell us where I come from. Where are you from? Moshud is an Islamic name. Anybody can be a Moshud. Okay. I just wanted to know how powerful African names are. My name is Bami Dili. Can you tell me where I come from with that Yoruba name, Bami? Yoruba land. Yes. We African, we have a name that tells story, history, or directory. Through your name, someone can locate you. As an African, through your name, someone can tell you where you come from. But during slave era, slaves don't have identity. They bear their master's name or any name their master wish to give to them. Like when you buy a dog and you give your dog any name you wish to give to your dog. If the white man that is slave are forefathers retain our forefathers' name, it will be very easy for the black Americans to repatriate back to their people. But because they don't retain their name, it's not easy for the blacks over there to trace their roots. The world know this compound as Brazilian Barracoon. Most slaves taken from this compound were being taken to Brazil, and most of them were Yoruba origin. Today in Brazil, there's a god mostly worshipped by the Yorubas called Yemoja. In Brazil, they call it Lemeja. Eshu, they call it Izu. Iyalaka, they call it Akaraje. Shongo, they call it Zango. That's what you know. There were Yorubas that have been moved from this compound down to Brazil, and they still practice the same culture. And Barracon is a Spanish word. It means dungeon, storehouse, or slave cell where slaves have been kept. In this compound, we have to turn about 40 rooms. Okay. During slave era, 40 slaves were being kept in each room. Okay. 40 times 40, 1,600 slaves were being moved in and out of this compound every three to four months. Mm. And this compound belongs to Seliki Williams Abbas. This is the man in the senator. His birth name was Ifare Bilekun Ifagbemi. How come the name changed to be Sediki Williams Abbas? This young man was captured at the age of six in a town called Jogarili in Ugu State during the Egbas and Daume War. He was captured by a slave trader called Abbas. Abbas was a black man, an Islamic scholar who lived in Daume. Abbas took the young, this young man to Daume and made him a domestic slave. We have two categories of slave, the field slave and the domestic. The field slave work on the farm, the domestic the work, yes, field. Okay, field. Okay, yes, the field slave work on the farm, the domestic work in the master house. Abbas used him as a domestic slave. Later, they sold him to a white man called Williams. Williams took Ifare Mlekun to Brazil and gave him education. Through Williams, Ifare Mlekun speak English, Dutch, Spanish, and Portuguese. Hmm. And while working for Williams, whenever Williams is going out for his business, he takes this young man along with him, consciously showing him his business. One day, Williams called him, young man, come, let me set you free on one condition. You work for me. And Ifare Mlekun grabbed the offer as the only opportunity he has to be a free person. When Ifara Emilekun left Brazil, he first settled in Lagos Island, then they called it Lagos Colony. He came to resettle in Baragri in this compound in the year 1840, when the second master, Williams, built this compound in the year 1840. Year 1895, Ifara Emilekun was to abandon Seriki Musulumi of Baragri. They made him the paramount ruler in Baragri. He ruled Baragri for 24 years. I will tell you much about him when we enter the museum. Let's see this other side. Okay. Okay. In the olden days in Africa, we have our own currency that we spend, our own money. If you have 100 nanotes, if anybody have 100 nanotes, I will show you some of this money I want to mention on that 100 naira note. note. This is 100 yes, naira. thank you. At the back of this 100 nanotes, we have what we call Manila. This two covering is called Manila, used by the Portuguese. This, are, uh, this is yellow salt. It's like a precious stone, a white stone. And these are cowrie shells. This is what? Manila, yellow salt, curry shells, and tobacco that they used for cigarettes these days was used as currency then. Mm. Thank you. When the European came, they did see all these things I mentioned as money. So they bring in the idea of trade by butter. When they bring in the idea of trade by butter, if European give our forefather one uh, ceramic bowl in exchange of ten human beings oh, as slaves. Okay. One yeah. of these. One of these ceramic bowls. We call it breakable plate. Ten slaves. We still have five plates. I will show you when we enter the museum. Mm -hmm. A then gone. Yoruba call it Ibon Shakabula. Was used in exchange of 40 human beings as slaves. The mirror doesn't have a specific number. The ISB that get the price. We call it bargain power. The big cannon gun, which is holding this bomb was used in exchange of 100 slaves. They shot on 40 slaves. The bottle of gin was used in exchange of 10 human beings as slaves. They are not after the liquor in the bottle, but the design on the bottle. 
I show you a surviving bottle in 1873 from Vienna, Austria. One umbrella was used in exchange of 40 human beings asleep. The question is, we Africans or black men, what do we do with the dengon and the cannons? We easy to fight ourselves to get more slaves to sell to the whites. We sold ourselves into slavery. And these two doors have been here since 1840 when this compound was established. It's part of our, ma our monument. People who are the world come to see. Yes, what since year? 1840. 1840. Yes. So out of 40 rooms, 38 of the rooms are currently occupied by Sidiki Williams Abbas' descendants. So the federal government went, met with the family in this compound that they should retain two cells the way it were. So they gather most of the relics and some of these items used in exchange of slaves in those two rooms for people over the world to see. Let's go inside the rooms and see what we have inside. So you're welcome. Out of 40 rooms, we are standing in one of the rooms. All rooms are like this. Where we are standing here is called a waiting cell. This is where European check slaves don't buy before they buy them. The same way we check animals before buying, the same way they check your man being. They take the eyes, they check the dentition, they hit them in the stomach to nip their feet. Because their aim and objective is to take them to where they are taking them to, to work for them on the farm. So they need healthy slave. Slaves above 35, 40 are called Macrons. European rejects such slaves. Any slave rejected by the European, they don't return them back to where they were captured. They kill them or feed them to animals. And we have the inner room, which is called the dark room, where they keep 40 people. We are still going there. Here we have what we call ankle chakos. They easy to join two slaves together while working on the farm. One in the leg of the first slave, one in the leg of the second slave. Shall we try it? Okay. Yeah. On me? No, we are not slaves. Fine, fine. Yeah. Okay. Like this, and they start this road. And put pal okay. Can you try to move with this? Oh, you I can't. drag me along Hi. with you. Two people work with this for 18 hours on the farm and they have 15 minutes to rest. They want to eat, drink water, pee, excrete. Within 15 minutes, they continue another hour for another 18 hours. These things are made of metal. It always puts wounds around the ankle. Nobody cares because slaves are property and you can do anything you like with your property. The difference between a slave and your sunshade is because a slave has life. If you get angry, you can break your sunshade. The same thing to slave. If you get angry, you can kill your slave and nobody will ask you for that. And here is a surviving umbrella used in exchange of 40 human beings. This umbrella was made of wood, brass, silk, and cane. As heavy as this umbrella is, one slave boy has to put it on the head of the master as long as the master will stay outside. And if a slave boy is putting this umbrella on the head of the master, he should play with his shoulders not to disappoint him. Because if this umbrella should drop from the hand of, of the slave boy on the head of the master, they will be head the slave. Hi. This umbrella was not designed for the sun nor for the rain, just to show your status in the community. You want to try the weight? You lift it from here to know the weight. Uh -uh. About 30 to 35 kg, one person will hold it on the head of the master as long as the master will stay outside. That chain on that wall behind you there, and this chain in this glass here, they use it to kill the slaves. Then, when we enter the second cell, I will show you how to do lynching with these two chains. And this iron is called branding iron. What's your name again, ma'am? Miriam. If I'm Miriam's slave, my name should be Miriam. So Miriam will put this iron in the fire, red hot, and she uses it to write Miriam on my chest. If she woman write it at the back. What's your name again, sir? Michael. If Miriam should buy me today and brand me Miriam, if Michael should buy me tomorrow, Michael will have to brand me again. Miriam brand me today, Michael will have to brand me tomorrow because I've become Michael sleeve. Let's go inside the dark room where they keep 40 people. Yeah. That's why we call it dark room. Dark room. These three glasses were not then. This is where they keep 40 people. 40 human beings in this room, three to four months. This is where they pee, this is where they screech. Because of the odor, some will vomit. Even women or men have to do it on themselves here. Hi. 40 people in this place, three to four months, that's the only ventilation they have. And there was a door here before they would lock the door. So they'll be here for three to four months. Let's see how many people have died in this kind of situation. That's why I do tell people, whenever we are here, we are not here to catch fun, but just to feel the pain the people in the past have felt our freedom fighters here we have a surviving bottle using an exchange of 10 human beings asleep 
Like I said earlier, they are not after the liquor in this bottle, but the design on the bottle. Many people have asked me, where is the design on this bottle that what's in human being? If you put on your flash, you'll see the design it's on, your on the bottle. The, on your flash. You can check it. That's the design. That was why they used it in exchange of 10 people. So that bottle represents 10 human beings because of that design you saw. And these are gramophone records used by Sediki Williams Abbas. These days we use cassette CDs. Most times we use our phone. And this brass was given to Sediki as a gift by the Brazilian when they made him the paramount ruler. And this kettle was given to him by the European. These are cowrie shells used in those days. Here we have surviving ceramic bowls used in exchange of 10, 10 human beings as slaves. It doesn't matter the size. This was used in exchange of 10. Same thing applicable to this and the rest. So we have 50 human beings in this glass. Oh. Because Sediki was a Muslim then, this is where they keep his water for ablution, his soup pot, and his drinking pot. Let's see the second cell and see what's inside. <sighs> so you're welcome to the second room. Like I said earlier, all the rooms are the same. A waiting cell and the dark room. Here's a local mannequin showcasing Sediki Williams Abbas cloth. The original cloth award the day they made him the paramount ruler. This is it. And the chair is sat under as the chair over there. And here is punishment given to any disloyal slave. Any slave that refused the master order or refused to bear the master's name. These are the tied them around the tree and beat them. During process, many died because they can't bear the pain. And these dogs are cochlear dogs. They usually to chase run away slave. If any slave tried to escape from the farm, they release 20 of these dogs to attack one man. When they catch the slave, they devour the slave. Here's the movement to the point of no return. Chains on the neck, the hands, and the leg of the slave while going to the point of no return. 3,000 men on a row, on a single fire. If the person in front will fall, the rest behind them will fall. If you are going to the point of no return, Today, while going, you will see a well called Spirit at a nation well. The well water they give the slaves then that make them to lose their memory is still on that island. Mm. And here is the story building built for Sediki Williams Abbas in this compound, year 1847. It collapsed 1995. When we go outside, I will show you the remains of the building. These are some people captured as slaves but have opportunity to come back, like Santo Silva, Candido G. Darocha, Samuel Ajayikrada, Jaja of Okobo, and some other people. The entrance door in this photo is the original door standing here, behind you. This door here. After the building collapsed, they moved the door inside this room. And these are some of the things that happened to our people during slavery. These are slave readers, they want to capture this man. But he took knife and killed himself. That for me to be slave, I prefer to die. There was a woman like that, Margaret Ghana. She killed four of her children and killed herself. That for me and my children to be slave, we prefer to die. This is what we call iron muzzle. They used to guard the mouth of slaves while working on the farm. For them not to eat from the farm product, they plant sugarcane. We derive glucose from sugarcane. Glucose gives instant energy. And this white may believe that if these slaves should eat out of this sugarcane, they will have strength to fight back. They feed slaves once in a day. Slaves have access to water once in a day. Hi. They don't feed slaves to increase in size or to stay healthy. They feed them to stay alive. Don't just die. And this is another match box. We don't have many slaves used in exchange of the box. This is called Ashwe 2 by the Yorubas, used by Seriki Williams Abbas. Let's see another room for 40 people. Here we have a sample of the iron corrugated sheet they use in roofing this compound then, compared to the one they produce these days. If I try to fold this iron sheet, it won't. But the one they produce these days, I can fold and keep in my pocket. We've lost quality. The two chains I showed you in the first room, the one on the wall, the one in the glass, this is what they use it for. If they catch any slave having sexual intercourse on the plantation, planning coop against the master or trying to run away. This is how they hang the men, this is how they hang the women. The tie that chain I showed you around the ribs of the men, the hands at the back. They hang them on gallo. They suspend the leg from the ground. In this position, that chain will break the ribs. They'll be dripping blood from the nose and the mouth. They'll be here dying gradually. Oh. This is how they hang the women. They are two hands up. They suspend the leg from the ground. The blood from the hand, the head, all over the body will come to the tie. They get heavier and they will be here dying gradually. In the presence of other slaves, as you see them, they won't last a day. Oh. And here, we have Sediki Williams Abbas Realization Chair. For someone to have this kind of chair in those days, it shows how prominent he was. Mm -hmm. And these are Sediki descendants. Currently, Baragi, if anybody is to be elect as Sediki of Baragi, the person should be from this family. And this is the current Sediki of Baragi. Let's see where Sereke Abbas was buried in this compound.
This well was dug in the year 1847 by the slaves. If you look inside the well, they didn't use rim for the well. They used burnt bricks. So they set the bricks one by one. So they it was done what? by the slaves. Burnt bricks. Okay, okay. And the same burnt bricks they use in constructing all the rooms okay. in this compound. Okay. In 1962, the family of Sadiq Williams Abbas used cement to hold the walls. Okay. This place used to be Sediki Williams Abbas Court, okay. where he passes judgment to the Muslim community and where he had meeting with any king in Nigeria down to have meeting with him then. And this place used to be his chamber where he relaxed himself. That relaxation chair was inside this room then. Mm -hmm. We still have some rooms behind this court. Let's see. So all these rooms were slave cell. But we have people living in these rooms now, here. Okay. So all in total, 40 rooms and 40 slaves in each. And all the rooms are the same, a waiting cell and the dark room. Mm. We can see sample of the burnt bricks mm -hmm. around here. The story building that was built for Sidiqui Williams Abbas in the okay. year 1847 okay. that collapsed in 1995 was standing here. Okay. This is the remains of the building. Here's the foundation. Okay. And all these rooms also were slave cell. When Sediki Williams Abbas died, this is where he was buried. Sediki Abbas died 11th of June 1919, and he was buried here. Sorry. 103 years ago that he died, he was buried here. Later, the Brazilian came back to build this mausoleum on his grave. Why? Because they see him as a loyal person. Someone that was captured as slave, later freed and he continued the business because his, ma his master has asked him to continue the business he was just like the two i see for the master here the master cannot be here and be in his hometown at the same time doing the business so he needs somebody that he can trust that we understand our people language here that was why he sent yeah. seriki down to yeah. nigeria and this is the tomb of the last son Saka Ajao Abbas. He was given birth to 1913. He was at the age of six when his father died. His father was at the age of six when he was captured as a slave and he died 1987 at the age of 74. So you're welcome to Brazilian Barracoon. Do you have any question? I'm so, I'm so weak. I don't even know what to ask. Do you guys have any question? Like my mentality has really changed coming here. A lot of things has changed. My mindset and I was even emotional in there when, I, when you tried to use that stuff on my leg. I couldn't move. I saw move. it in your eyes. But you I, almost dropped tears. I almost did. I saw it. I, can't, I don't know what to ask. Uh, Do you guys if, have any if you don't have any question, maybe if you see some other museums, you may have question. We okay. still have like four okay, other sites. We shall we? Okay. We shall. So, this compound mm. used to be slave cell, okay. where they keep the slaves, okay. while waiting for the arrival of the slave ship. Okay. The slave ship will spend up to three to four months on the sea before getting to this place okay. so they'll keep the slaves in this uh, compound for three to four months that's why i said they moved 1600 slaves into this compound and out of this compound every three to four months okay. and while taking them out there was a road here before so okay. they'll cross them through this lagoon okay. to the other side okay. and they walk on that island it is called berefu island okay. before they take them to the point of no return okay. and while going by the right, we'll see the spirit at the nation well. If you wish to see the point of no return, we'll go Let's everywhere. go. We wish to. Hi, guys. So we're going to the first story building. Two story building, right? First, yes. That's one story building. One story building in Nigeria. First story building. When was it built? It was built in 1845. Okay. Okay, let's go inside and see. This is first story building in Nigeria, built in 1845. Mm, mm, mm. This is fun. So how we gonna do? So, you're welcome to the four-story building in Nigeria. If you look at this compound, then we have total number of ten buildings in this compound. Then, other nine buildings have collapsed, except this story building that is still standing. When we enter inside this building, I will show you where those buildings were standing okay if you look at this board 
this signboard the road boarding house there's another one over there schoolmaster house there's another one there the church and there's one here the kitchen so this place that you Mission see house. these signs mm. buildings were standing there before mm. but they've collapsed so we just put these signs to indicate that the building was standing there before let's go inside the building So, you're welcome to the first story building in Nigeria. First story building built by Reverend C. A. Goma the first time. Reverend C. A. Goma first built this building in the year 1843. And this is what this building looks like then. When Reverend C. A. Goma built this building, he built it with planks, only wood. But when Reverend Henry Townsend came in, he rebuilt it with burnt bricks, the way it looks like currently. That was when uh, Reverend Henry Townsend rebuilt this building with burnt bricks and Reverend C. Egoma with planks. Here we have some of the things they use in constructing the building. This nail, we all know this nail, right? But do we know these nails? No. No. They use these nails on the soft woods. They use this one on the hard woods. Okay. And in this glass, we have some old hinges they use behind the doors. These are the old hinges and sample of the burnt bricks they use in constructing the building. And here is the same iron corrugated sheet I showed you in the barracoon. Okay. This is another one here. And look at the foundation. You see that they use burnt bricks mm -hmm. and they set the bricks one by one. In this building, we have to turn about six rooms. Mm -hmm. We visit the first room, we we'll visit another room. And let me quickly show you. This is the geographical architecture map as it is in 1843. This is the story building. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Plus the story building making 10. But these nine buildings have collapsed, except this one that is still standing. So let's see the next room. In this room, we have the painting of a tree called Agia Tree. Under this tree, Christianity was first proclaimed in Nigeria. When the missionaries came in, what, they, what can we preach the gospel to these people? And they discovered that many market women come under this tree to showcase their market. So they decided to preach this gospel under this tree. This tree lasted for 350 years. And after the fall of this tree, the government built this monument in replace of the tree. Okay. Yes. And this monument is no more there. They want to rebuild it. I will show you if you want to see it when we are going. And Okay, you've seen it. No, we want to see it. Okay. And this is the comment by Reverend Henry Townsend, the man who built this building. He said, This house is strong and convenient and will prove very comfortable during the erection. Many persons have come to see it, especially of the single roof. It's been the first I have ever seen. Same. The person who built it. That was what he wrote. And here is a Christmas celebrated in Baragri in 1923. You can see these black men, they are the laborers working in this place then you can see the route 1923 badagri mary x mass so let's see the third room so this third room used to be the room of the first western teacher okay. first teacher in nigeria this is him here, Mr. Claudius Phillips. He came in with the early missionaries. And the first set of students, they were enrolled in the school. 
this man was the one who taught them how to read and how to write. They want our people to accept Christianity. And they discover that these people don't understand their language. Mm -hmm. So they have to teach us how to read and how to write. Mm -hmm. And here's the first primary school. It's at the back of Mobile Filling Station. If you want to see the school, it's still standing. I'll show you if you want to see it. We, we want I'll to. take you there. And the first set of students that were enrolled in this school were 40 men. Not women, not children. 40 men. And each one of them spent 12, 12 years in school. The youngest among them then was at age of 46. And each one of them spent 12, 12 years in school. I just imagine when my father would come back from school and tell me, ah, our teacher flogged me because I don't know. <laughs> Let's go. So this is the total estimated amount. There is in constructing all the buildings in this compound then, 325 Dollar. pounds. Oh, pounds, sorry. Yes, 325 pounds to construct all the 10 buildings in this compound then. Let's go upstairs and see the room of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder. So you're welcome to the room of Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder, the man who translated the first English Bible to Yoruba Bible. And here is the first English Bible brought by the early missionaries, Reverend Henry Townsend, in the year 1842. Because Reverend Henry Townsend came in in the year 1842. And this is the first Yoruba Bible translated in the year 1845, three years interval. And this is the photo of Bishop Samuel Ajay Crowder. Bishop Samuel Ajay Crowder was also a slave. And here is his name. This is his birth name, Ajay. This is the name given to him by the master, and this is the name of the master. Crowder. Crowder. Bishop Samuel Ajay Crowder, when he came back, he had a chaplain called Babington Macaulay. Babington Macaulay married to Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder's daughter and they gave birth to a boy called Abat Macaulay. Let's see the next room. In this room, we have the photo of Reverend C. A. Goma, the man in charge of the building. And we have the photo of Reverend Henry Townsend, the man who rebuilt this building the way it is. And this is the photo of Thomas Birch Freeman, the man who sowed the seed of Christianity in Nigeria. Let's see. This room. Here is the cemetery of the early missionaries. Total number of missionaries buried here were 140. Okay. And this cemetery is not far from here, it's along the General Hospital Road. And the missionaries living in this room then, uh, in this building then, they have their saving bank where they keep their valuables and money. And here we have, we have some of the old currency we spend in Africa then. These are carry shells. And these are the coins we spend then before they introduce notes. This is one around note. Ah, this is a bat macaulay. You can see. Can you guys first open it? Let's see. Okay. One era. Let me tell you a funny story about this one era note. Okay. When I was young, my brother stole this one era note from my father and he took it to school, thinking that he can finish this money just in a day. He went to school with this money. He bought things for his friend, he bought for himself. And this is a note. If you buy anything with a note, with this one era note, then you come back home with coins. Mm -hmm. They'll give you coins as change. When he spent the money, he discovered that he still had many change with him. And when he was coming back from school, the coins were jingling in his pocket. Mm -hmm. And my father said, come, you stole my money. He said, no, where do you have those money with you? Mm -hmm. Then this one era note is just like 10,000 era then that one person cannot finish in a day but these days if you give me hundred thousand now I'll finish it within seconds let's go downstairs we'll go downstairs and see the well called miracle well miracle well yes is it the first well no that was not the first well we have many wells in Miami. I 
Yes, this is the miracle what does it well. Do? This well was dug in the year 1842. Okay. And since this well was dug, it has never run dry, it doesn't change color, and it doesn't have taste. Many people visited this place, and when they hear about the water, they develop interest. Some people took this water home and prayed on it, and came back to testify that when they pray on this water, it really worked for them. You can see these women here, they came to pray on this water and they would take it home. That was why they named it Miracle Well. Tourists named it Miracle Well, not the missionaries. Every other well water has iron in it, but this well water doesn't have iron. It's drinkable. This water is drinkable, and it serves the people in this area. Every other well water on this axis has connection with the lagoon water. If the lagoon is neat, every other well water will be neat. If the lagoon is dirty, every other well water will be dirty, except this water. Do you want to try it? Okay. Shall we drink? Yes, I want to. But we don't have time. Mommy. Okay. Then in primary school, we stretch our two hands to drink water. I want to I'll just wash my hand and drink. <laughs> Maybe I cool water. Let me wash my hands first. I cover this water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As I drink you, no cause harm to me. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Ooh, with my hair, let's go again. Does it taste like well water? No. That's why they named it Miracle Well. It not taste like well water. Oh. Ben, okay. It's just water. And it's clean in my mouth. It's like the sea well water I drink. It's very clean. So, shall we? We shall. Yeah. You're welcome to the first story building in Nigeria. Let's proceed. We are through here. We're done here. Yeah. Yeah, so, so beautiful of that video documentary like historical mm -hmm. document of um of the slave trade in nigeria you know is uh is a very beautiful story a very beautiful research uh that's and also educative content you know made by miriam oyakilome you know in padagre you know when i was a child my grandfather do tell me something he do narrate um what he witnessed during the slave trade you know what actually happened to him okay let me just uh, narrate it a bit my grandfather used to take snuff you know like um the grinded uh, i don't know what people do call it but snuff we do call it snuff you know my grandfather do do take it uh so he loves it a lot he doesn't play with it so one day when he was just coming back from work one of his tight friend one of his close tight friend uh he was carrying uh firewood on the head so one of his close tight friend saw him and approached him as and was like hey benko benko uh, come uh, we have visitors sharing snuff. Come and take yours. Uh, my gullible grandfather dropped uh, his firewood, the bunch of firewood he was carrying, and rushed to take his own share of snuff. On getting there, <laughs> he saw a lot of people packed their cage he had to run for his dear life oh you know that always make me like that always make us laugh whenever he start narrating that story uh, but that's to show you the kind of activities people we are doing then you know the kind of like how people we are getting captured 
how Africans were getting captured, how Africans were betraying their uh, their brothers and selling their brothers to slavery. You know, it was a funny. Um, it's a funny thing to say, but it was reality. It was reality. Africa actually sold themselves. Africans actually sold themselves to slavery. It's a reality. So this is um, the story actually tells us a lot about how far we have come, where we are coming from, and the reason for Africa's underdevelopment, the reason why Africans or Nigeria is still the way it is. You understand? Because according to the story, these people looted a lot of things from Africa. They looted a lot of miracle resources. Well, I can't possibly say uh, what they did in many years ago. See the reason why Nigeria or Africa is the poor. No, that's not it. Because that's why what they did or that's why what they took. Africans, Nigeria still have enough resources to develop our country. But these people really did. They really uh, hunted us down. They really took a lot from us. They really benefited a lot of a lot from us. You know. Even in this video, we also learn about um, some of the things uh, um, Africans we are getting exchanged with, like things like cup, gun, plates, ceramic plates, bottle. Imagine as 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 so, imagine something like human being being exchanged with a bottle and gun. Africans getting their brothers, capturing their brothers just to exchange them with gun. Just as just like the uh, curator said, what do we Africans need gun for? What do we need the bottle for? They were all interested in the design on the bottle, not not even the liquid. What are they or like what do they need gun for? They use it in capturing them in capturing themselves. Just the same way my grandfather's friend wanted to capture capture my grandfather. But sometimes I will just be like, why didn't he allow him? I'll, I'll allow him to uh why didn't he allow himself to be captured at least by now i would have been i would have been a foreign person like by now i would have been a black american come on i would have been a black american than than this place it was out of his stubbornness where he was resisting i'm not going i'm not going look at those people that that got captured they are not the one enjoying themselves as black americans <laughs> but that is a funny word to say sham that's funny word to say though but that's to tell you what african really passed through imagine someone capturing his own brother just because of gun or even mirror imagine as as dumb as it can be but it's reality it was reality that's what people we are doing. Africans, we are capturing themselves. We are capturing their, bro their brothers. Selling them into slavery. In exchange of things that are not really relevant. Things that doesn't make sense. Gun. Ceramic plates. Kettle. Umbrella. In Imagine gun being getting exchanged with 10 human heads. That's to show you how far Africans has gone. That's to show you the struggles of Nigeria, the struggle of Africans. What the first then? How our own people betrayed us. It's quite an appalling experience. Yeah, very sad story. 
and to think that this history, the teaching of history, got diminished all of a sudden, vanished from the school, is another thing to talk about. I mean, when you go to our educative, our education, education sector in Nigeria, you really don't know what's happening there. You really don't get their plan towards retaining some of this history some of these some of these things that happened in the past many of us actually don't know about these things many of us we, we are not taught nobody teach us many of us actually don't know much about this we really don't know anything about our our nation, things about our our continent, the struggles our country has been over the years. The country, the struggle our continent has been over the years. Because come on, this slavery of a thing doesn't just happen. It's not. It didn't just happen only in Nigeria. It's something that happened almost all the countries in Africa. Almost all the countries in Africa. Yeah. Even Ghana, Cameroon, Senegal, all the, like most African countries in Nigeria, we are affected because of this 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 business or this trading of a thing. It's such a sad story to say. Like it's very very sad. How far Africa has gone, how far the continent, how far the country has gone, the struggles of our forefathers to resist imagine the things the forefathers faced. Imagine using imagine how using iron to cage each slaves to make sure they don't run away they don't get freed they don't get their freedom even those slaves that they use in working on their farms that work in their farms imagine how some of them get get iron how the, like how the slave masters always use iron cover things that we that can cover their mouth so that they won't be able to feed from the plants or from the fruits because they know too well that if an African man uh, 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 a British man a white man know that if an African man get feed get strength he will be he will have energy to defeat him or her they will if they start getting feed they will have energy because come on africans we are too in times of strength we have strength come on when uh, when you look at around when you look at boxing we have one of the strongest contender in Boston all over the world. Anthony Joshua, and that was Anthony Joshua. An African blood. Not just African, Nigerian blood. You don't you don't compare us in 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 in, in, in anything. Africans, blacks, we are always strong, we are always energetic, we are always physical fit. You can give it to you any time, bone to bone, man to man. You don't, as as a white man, you don't challenge us in 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 fights. Why? Because an African man feed feed heavy heavy food. Swallow, he eat swallows, eat swallows, eat swallow. Get enough energy. Eat rice. Get enough energy. Chop corn, chew corn. Heavy. 
heavy banded yam get enough in it so that we can which we will be able to fight anyone yeah so they know to where that if they are to allow if they are to allow an african man get food they will blow the they will blow the let me not use the word before to avoid youtube wala and problems but they will they will they will give them they will give them a lot of boon a lot of so they knew that's why they resulted in in using face cover to cover their face while working on their farms so that they don't get free and they don't get strength slaves that we are not physically fit they strangle them to death or feed them to their animals or to their dogs a lot of things happening a human art by the whites the the whites raping the women a lot of things happening as a story of slave trade in nigeria and this is also applicable to to that of almost african countries this is also applicable the same thing happened the same thing happened we will keep and sadly the school system doesn't want to bring the school system doesn't want to keep returning this historical event or situations to the memory of the young teenagers or the young people who are just growing up now making it making it look like the story is now fading away most of the things I said in this video, I was not aware. I don't know them. If not the few things, my if not the few things, my grandfather always share with me. If not the few things, my grandfather always share with me when I was a child of. The funny experience he had when his friend was trying to betray him trying to sold him to to to, to a white a white man because of snuff and that is his his the 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 urge of snuff yeah he wanted to go and take snuff not knowing it's a trap they set for him but luckily he was he, he, he was able to escape it which to me i don't even think is is i don't think i even think uh, is something i should applaud him for because come on he should have allowed himself to be caught so that by now i know i would have i'm just playing don't mind me i'm just playing but that just to tell you things uh, our forefathers passed through you understand how they were able to get packed in the same room almost the same room there we had to eat feed the screech urinate do all sorts of things if you get weak along the line you can just the person can just die off and others will continue slave trade in nigeria such a sad story and it actually happened years ago. It's such a sad story. But the promise is we'll keep making research. 
will keep bringing some of this educative historical content lives of blacks the way being of blacks history of blacks treatment of blacks how blacks are getting treated how they are, the lives of blacks how they are living how they are coping in different environments being in europe america asia wherever they are how blacks are being are getting treated come on because a lot of racism happening almost all the white countries so we keep on bringing these ideas this content for our people to enjoy for our people to see in the creation of this world according to the holy book everyone was created together everyone was created together and sadly enough the people that brought religion to us we are the people that got us enslaved the people that brought religion to us if i'm to ask christianity we are christians we are more yeah christianity who actually brought christianity to us and these people and this people we are also the one that we are enslaved in enslaving nigerians africans their enslaved coast ghana a very big church was built above the slave bunk is it called slave bunk we are slaves are being kept under the ground dungeon yeah in a dungeon underground above it a big catholic church mighty church was a rare third day that's 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 christian that's christianity that's the religion these people pro introduced to us that's what they did they did to us you get the smartness, you get the game they played over there. That's the people that that told us thou shall not kill, thou shall not harm each other, you shall love your brothers and sisters. But how did this people start it? They started by harming us, harming Africans. They started by Stealing us, yeah, we, we, we are getting stolen. Imagine you wake up and you are and you are walking somewhere, and all of a sudden someone steal you. That sounds funny, right? But people are actually getting stolen and now getting transferred to another country. Who knows? Definitely, that's the people we regard as black Americans today. And not just black Americans, not just because most of the people gotten from Africans, we are split among their continents, different countries of their continent. Some went to Asia, some America, some Europe, different places. It was trade. Slave trade was a huge business there. Then it was a huge business that almost all the European countries, almost Asia and other foreign countries, we are now partaking it, partaking in it. It was a huge investment. It was a huge business. That and this actually affected a lot of Africans. Something that got over 20 millions of people enslaved over is it over 20 or over 12 million and like millions of africans we are affected by this millions of africans we are looted out of this 
out of their own border they are taking away properties a lot of africans africans um my neck up and look exactly what I am 73. A lot of Africans, Afri Africans, art and crafts, we are taking away. But today, some of all these things is being recovered from Cambridge, Harvard. Some of these things are being London. Some of these things are being recovered and now getting back to their. To their respective countries. It's a very beautiful story. That's an educative story that teaches you who you are as an African, who you are. As an African, this your story, the story of your forefathers. Most of us, our grandfathers witnessed these things. Our grandfathers witnessed it. Even most, some of some of us, our own fathers also witnessed this. Some of us, our fathers also witnessed this. Also had these experiences. Also, some of us, our fathers, our mothers, our grandmothers, know when these things happen. We are not in a modern age. No one is talking about yesterday. We are talking about today and tomorrow. But you know, in every country, the past plays a crucial role, an important role towards the present and the future. You can never talk about the present without talking about the past. You can never know your next destination until you know where you're coming from that's who we are you can never know the future of nigeria until you you study about the history of nigeria you can never know why africans are poor until you discover the reason behind it until you go back to your roots and learn what happened back then you can never know That was Africa for you. Well, I believe whether the government wants the history to be to be available in the institution, educati educational level, educational sector, or whatever. But the truth must be told. The content we keep on coming and we keep on learning. We keep on bringing this research and this these historical videos we will keep on bringing it to your home screen we will keep on telling you what blacks face what we will keep on saying what blacks is what blacks face and what they are facing in their respective uh, 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 country or state of origin or control country of origin or country of residence we keep on bringing the lives of blacks the lives of africans the lives of common man in the society we keep on bringing it to you whether the government permit it in your school in the school or not whether the government wants the history to to be taught or not, but we will keep on teaching you, we will keep on bringing it to you because it's very important, it's very crucial, it's very, it's relevant to our culture, it's relevant, it's help, it helps in knowing who we are, embracing diversity, learning our commonly goals, our, our shared vision to forge our head of how to build a good nation one and prosperous nation for everyone one and prosperous continent for everyone and how to make the world a better environment for everyone to thrive in for everyone to thrive in and and feel safe not blacks feeling intimidated in a foreign land 
not blast getting racial abuse getting maltreatment in foreign land that's not what we are doing that's not what we want we want to make sure that blacks get protected get enough protected they feel they can they can voice out their opinion they can say whatever they want without feeling intimidated without getting abused without getting any racism of all kind be it in politics in music in football all sectors of life we want the blast to be inclusive what we are fighting is not is not it's not against the white party it's not again it's it's not the the fight is not again it's not black against the white no we are fighting for inclusion inclusion we are fighting for love we are fighting for good treatment black should be included without any form of racial abuse and whatever in decision making in all kinds of sectors that's what we are talking about how black should cope the normal way black people should be treated those where white people are getting treated black should also get such treatment simple as that but in everything we will keep on bringing all this beautiful content to you my name is Brad Tobias and the video you just watch is a documentary made by one of the Nigerian content creators Maria Moyakilome. She did her best going to Paragri to investigate to make research about this about this about this thing. And my respect to her and the original copyright goes to her. So in everything, we will keep on enlightening you more. We will keep on bringing these ideas, this content, this kind of content to your home screen. And if you know at this point you haven't liked the video or you haven't subscribed at all, what are you still waiting for? Just like the video so that YouTube can, it can, YouTube can also be pushing it more so that other people we see we watch and understand and learn from it and know what the, our forefathers passed through they will they will watch and learn their origin and learn what happened and know places they are from some of us we really don't know who we are it's high time we start watching videos it's high time to we start getting some of this educative content to know who we are where we are from our origin and we are here to make sure you achieve those things all you just need to do for us is be part of our community by subscribing to 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 the channel and we'll keep on bringing this content for you don't forget like the video so that the youtube algorithm can push it more further to pay for people to see and also enjoy and also benefit from it as i said before my name is bright Tobias, and i wish we all can learn watch this video and have and have and get educated from it at this point i will be signing out i think i've said enough we will keep on learning we will keep on evolving we will keep on getting educated thank you for watching bye